Hello, welcome fifth graders. This is our technology class week seven. So we are very close to the end of the first quarter. And so that date is November 11th. So what I wanted to just start out with today is just going over the typing lessons because I want to make sure that you understand what you need to do in order to receive credit for the first quarter. So right now I'm inside of the fifth grade um, typing account. So this is our class here. Every time you log into your account, you will see the first thing when you sign in will be all of your assignments, okay? And so there are five assignments for the first quarter, okay? There were four of them and then this week there's one more and then there won't be any new ones after this week. So there are a total of five uh, typing assignments. They all need to be completed. And so when you complete it, it sends me, it lets me know inside of the account, yes, they did complete it. And as soon as I see that you're done, then I give you 100 for it. Now, if you don't complete it, then you get a zero. So you really need to be proactive about this. Um, I think I might've said it in another week, previous week, but you should set aside just a typing day. Um, it could be a weeknight, a weekend, and I would say no, no more than 30 minutes for the whole week, and you would be able to get the typing assignment done. If, if you type faster, then it will be less than 30 minutes. And some of them, like the one for this week is the three-minute typing test. So how many minutes is it going to take you to complete that? Three minutes. I think you could all do three minutes of typing, right? So I'll just quickly go over um, what uh, the lessons have been so far. You had the typing assessment. So this was kind of like a little typing test um, as like your, our first lesson that we did. So please complete that. The scale builder is probably the longest out of all the assignments because it has 12 mini lessons inside of it. So that it would have been a good idea to split that one up a couple of different typing sessions. Then we had the beginner review. Um, and again, that one was pretty straightforward, just reviewing, typing. Um, we had easy bottom row words. So again, very simple, just building up your typing skills. And then this week, the three minute typing test, okay? So please, if you are falling behind, it looks like 63% of you did the typing assessment, then it was only 37% for the skill builder and 47 on the beginner review. So it does look like there are quite a few of you that need to go in there. Everybody has their own typing account. So you need to let me know if you're having a problem with the account, you should have let me know already four weeks ago, but please don't wait for the last day. This is the easy way to get a 100 um, on these typing assignments, okay? So please get those done. All right, I'm gonna move on now. So this week we're doing our second step lessons and the topics that we are talking about are being able to predict feelings and to be able to understand perspectives. And this is so important because in our world of technology, and technology is a part of all of your lives, right? Since you guys are young, right? I mean, since all of your growing up years, your childhood years, technology has been a part of your life. And, some, and there's something called emotional intelligence. And this is a really important skill. And you might talk to some of your parents in their workplace. Um, they, they might be like, yeah, you know, our workplace uses this. And they teach these skills even to adults because, you know, people spend, I'm just going to grab my phone just to show you guys an example, but people spend so much time on these devices, right? They're constantly in front of a screen and they forget how to just have a conversation face to face with somebody, right? And so that's why I think it's worth to have these lessons as part of our technology class because for your future, um, if you look at any of the jobs of the future, they all are going to require emotional intelligence, these kinds of skills, even working in the field of robotics, having a sensitivity to how technology makes people feel, it will make you better 
at whatever it is that you are designing and creating, because you will make a product that will bring joy to people's lives and happiness because you're, you have an emotional intelligence, right? You're not just all about creating something and you don't ever stop and think how it's going to affect people, how it's going to make them feel, right? So this is a really important skill. And again, working on teams with people, right? You know, you may have done some group work in the past. I know last year we did for fourth grade robotics, some group work, right? Where you had to work on a team. And I know a lot of you guys discovered that it's not easy to work with other people. People have different personalities. They have different perspectives, which is what we're going to be learning about today. Point of views, opinions on things. Um, and we have to learn how to really understand people. Not everybody has the same life that you have, right? And so a super important um, skill. So the first part of our lesson is called predicting feelings. And so what does it mean to predict something? And I'm talking to myself here. Let me get Lego man. Maybe he can um, answer this. What do you think? Um, I think when you make a prediction, you try to figure out what you think might happen. Yeah, what you think might happen. So you're thinking about um, what might happen if this situation happens to somebody. How might they feel? What might they do? How will they react, right? Um, and so you're predicting, right? And so you might get it right, you might get it wrong, but the more that you do it, and the more that you know people and you understand them, the easier this will get. And this is so important in friendships, right? Friendships or any sort of relationship. Um, it could be, you know, with family. Um, just trying to, the more that you understand people, the easier it will get for you to predict how they feel. And then you'll be able to act accordingly, right? To be able to support them because you'll know, oh, okay, I know this is kind of how they act with how they feel when this type of thing happens. So what we're going to be looking at right now is a story about this boy named Lucas and he tries to make his cousin feel included in the new school, okay? So we're gonna look for clues to figure out how each of the people are feeling. So I'll put on the first part of the video and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. My mom is sick, so I'm staying with my Aunt Letty and Cousin Lucas. I'll be staying a while, so I'm going to go to his school. My cousin Aaron is staying with us for a while. He'll be going to my school, but he's in a different class. It's kind of weird staying with them. Lucas and I get along pretty well, but we're really different. He's always wanting me to shoot hoops with him. I'm not that into sports, especially basketball. I'd rather read or play a video game. So today is Aaron's first day at my school. My mom says I have to make him feel welcome. I mean, I'm glad he's staying with us. I just don't want to be responsible for him all the time. Come on, I made it so you can be on the other team. Let's play. Okay, so there's a second part, but I won't put it on yet. Let's just talk about this for a second. So here's the two boys. So we learned the story that the one boy um, needs to go and stay with his family for um, a little bit of time. And so he's going to be going to the same school as his cousin. And so they share that we that they're different. They have different interests. But it seems like the boy... Um, Lucas, right, the one who, this is his school, he's been going there, he's not really thinking about the other person, because he's just coming up with things that he likes to do, right, he's like, well, I like sports, so hey, you can come play basketball with me, right, so let's try, try and predict how this boy is feeling, his cousin, when he goes up to him during recess and says, hey, come on, we have a spot for you on the basketball team. And he's staring at him like, uh, um, didn't I just tell you that I'm not really into sports, right? And so obviously he wasn't listening, didn't really understand him. And now he's doing something that is probably going to make the cousin feel, how do you think he's feeling? Um, I think he's feeling a little bit frustrated. 
Um, maybe he's feeling sad because he doesn't really want to play and um, he feels like the cousin didn't listen to him and understand him. Yeah, so totally, right? Um, and so guys, this happens every single day. Uh, people do this all the times. So they they think that all the things that they like or you know how they would feel about something is how what somebody else would like and how they would feel about it. So they'll go up to someone and be like, oh, look, I got you. Um, I don't know, make up something. I got you a, a piece, slice of pizza for lunch. And they have no idea that the person doesn't even like pizza. They don't even eat dairy or whatever it is. And they're just like, oh, great, you got me pizza. You obviously have no idea anything about me, right? And then how does it make them feel? Instead of it turning into the other person think they're doing something nice for the person, it's making the person feel like they don't care about me. They never even take time to ask anything about me, right? To try to find out what I like, right? And so that's a really important thing. I think as you guys get older now and you start to get to know each other, right? Your friends and people around you um, kind of in a deeper way where it isn't just always about what you want to do and how you would feel about it. And then you're just acting that way to other people, right? And this is something that adults do all the times too. You know, they'll, they'll think in their mind that they're doing something amazing for someone and because it, they, they would think it's amazing. But then the other person to them, it's like awful. And so then they're just like, why is this person saying this to me? And they think they're being nice. You know, and so there's so many misunderstandings that happen in our lives. And this happens a lot on the internet because you can't really, it's hard to predict how someone's feeling when say you're playing a game with them because you, number one, you don't see their face. Usually you don't hear their tone of voice because maybe you're doing it through the chat or something. And so it can be really tricky to predict how someone's feeling. And so we might type something you know in a chat and think oh this is so funny they're gonna laugh at it and then maybe they get it and they don't get it and they're just like why did that person just say that to me and then they're like offended or, or they're hurt or something so you do have to be really careful with these kinds of situations um, and really stop yourself before you say or do anything and try to think how would let me try to predict how they would feel you know if I did this so like for example with the cousin trying to predict you know, well, if he was actually listening to him when the boy said, I don't really like sports, then he would have never asked him to play basketball, right? Because he would have actually taken the information and used it. And then he would have predicted ahead of time, oh, this will make him feel worse. So definitely I will not ask him to play basketball. So let me put on the second part um, and then you guys can watch it. And so let's see what happens. Hey, Aaron, we're going to play basketball again. But if you don't want to play, I know a group of kids who go to the library during recess. Do you want to meet them? Sure. That'd be great. OK, so what do we notice happens differently now the second time around with the two boys? And the answer is, now we see the cousin actually considering the feelings of his cousin. And he's thinking, hmm, I'll invite him, but you know, if he doesn't want to do it, no big deal. You know, I know he likes to read. So I'll see if he wants to go hang out with the other kids in the library. And I'll actually set him up for something that I know he's going to enjoy doing, right? So that it will make his day better for him, right? So we never want to force ourselves on people. We never want to, you know, just assume that people are going to feel the same way as us or like the same things that we like, or that just because something, um, you know, to us would be amazing. Again, they may, it might not be that way for them. So I really hope that this part of the lesson helps you guys to start thinking that you need to really stop and predict how other people are feeling and really take that into consideration before you go and say or do anything, right, with somebody. And especially if you do care about people, because, you know, we're all here together and, you know, we're all working in our lives, trying to make the most of our lives. And it's really important to kind of come out of that self-centered bubble where it's like all about us, right? 
and like to really try to care about somebody else. And I think, I, I mean, I'm just going back to the Bible because this is a Christian school, but I really think that when Jesus walked on the earth, um, he really did consider, you know, he definitely considered the feelings of other people. And he didn't just go up to people and kind of assume, oh, they must know that I am the son of God. And, you know, now they're just going to, you know, want to repent and they're going to want to uh, follow me. Right. And he, he was never like that. He always went up to people and like he, he listened to their life, you know, tell me. Right. Like what's going on with you? And he would really seek to understand people. And then it was through that love and understanding that people then they wanted to know him. And it's kind of the same with us when we have, you know, interactions with other kids, right? Um, if you really want to be a light to other kids, then you have to really stop and think, consider their feelings, right? Um, so now that leads us to the next part of the lesson, which is talking about other people's perspectives. So taking others' perspectives. So this is such a great lesson because um, when we think about people, not everybody is going to have the same um, perspective as you, right? The same point of view or opinion on something. And sometimes we have to really stop and try to see it through their point of view, right? And so I have a little video clip here and it's kind of like a little drama that could happen um, when we don't always stop and see something from somebody else's perspective, right? So normally if we were together in the class, I usually have this little, it's kind of like a fun little activity where I have something that I put on the chair, usually it's like a book or something, and I have everybody sitting in their seat and then I have them take a look at it and I say, draw me a picture of what you see from where you are. And then when everybody holds it up, we can see that the drawings all look different because you're all sitting in different places. And so from your perspective, it looks different, right? And if you've ever done, um, gone to like an art museum and they have those like paintings where um, you can like see different things in it. And so like you might see one thing and then somebody else sees something else right away. Um, I, those are great with just kind of like this, this lesson, right? For perspective, because it really gets you to see how people are, they see things differently, right? And they don't always see it the same way. And that's normal because we're all created different, right? God didn't create us to be copies of each other. He created us to be original. And our each of our life stories is original, meaning that your life story is an original copy and the person sitting next to you, they have an original copy. And if you really care about somebody, you're gonna try to seek to understand how did you get, you know, the point of view that you have? Where did it come from? And you want to understand that. Okay, so let me put on this little clip um, and then we'll come back and kind of talk about this. So last night, my brother broke into my diary again and I don't know how he keeps finding it. I keep hiding it. Oh my gosh, me too. Hey, what do you think you're doing? No cuts. What are you talking about? We're in line. Does it look like it to me? Well, we are. Okay, so drama. Um, from the perspective of this girl, she's walking up um, to the water fountain. These two girls are having a conversation and then they think that she cut in line for the water fountain, right? So we're seeing it from their perspective, right? They're having a conversation they see this girl walk over. Now let's look at it from her perspective. We have got to get outside. I know, I really want the fifth grade hoop. So do I. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna get a drink of water while no one's in line. Hey, what do you think you're doing? No cuts? What are you talking about? We're in line. Doesn't look like it to me. Well, we are. Okay, so drama, but I'm sure that something similar has probably happened to you guys because I think that we're in human nature, we always have the tendency to just kind of have those blinders up and we only see what we see. We don't see how other people see it, right? So this is kind of a, I don't know, good example, I suppose, um, of you know these girls all standing there and then we see this girl and from her perspective, doesn't look like anybody's on the line. She was completely innocent and in going over. She wasn't on purpose cutting, right? And so again, this can happen 
all the time. I'm sure if you thought about this, even today, you might have an example of, you know, where you thought something about someone, um, you know, and then you stopped and you thought, wait a minute, maybe that really isn't how it is, right? And it can really be destructive because take even this example, if they all start fighting with each other and maybe they start saying mean things or whatever, it can turn into a really big fight. And how silly to have a big fight over something that is so small. And that's usually what happens with people. Even with adults, it starts off as something small. And then because they're not really seeing it from the other person's perspective, it turns into this huge fight. And then it's really hard to backtrack once you've spoken harsh words or mean words to someone. It's hard to take it all back and be like, oh my gosh, do I feel silly? That was really, really wrong of me, right? So I don't know, that's why it's my hope with these lessons to get you guys to really start, you know, thinking about this. And especially as you get more and more on the internet um, and you get older and, you know, I don't know, but there, there is just so much out there. People, you know, they don't even take into account other people's perspectives. They're constantly posting about their opinion on something, you know, and usually it's not a nice opinion. It's like an opinion against someone else, something mean about somebody. And it's because they don't even know what it's like to be that other person. They don't even take time to understand that other person. They just want to immediately jump to their opinion on something, right? And, and it's so easy on the internet to just type something, right? Because you're not face to face with the person. You could easily type, well, this is what I think about it, right? And then before you know it, you're back and forth with somebody. And this happens every day on social media sites and news sites. And so, my hope is for your generation, when you guys get older, you will not be those people. You will be the people who will stop and say, hmm, let me just think about this before I post something or before I type in that chat or before I speak something to somebody or before I accuse someone of something, right? I'm going to actually think about their perspective. I'm going to predict how they would feel about it. This is going to make you an amazing person. People are going to love to be around you. They're going to love to work with you. Because let me just tell you in the workplace, oh, this can happen every day. People do this to each other. You know, they predict things about people. Um, they don't even bother thinking about people's perspectives. And it really can make a lot of hurt feelings. Um, it can cause a lot of division amongst people where then they, they have a hard time working together because they, they now have put up these walls because they're hurt, you know, by the person. And so I just think if you guys could get a hold of this, it'll be, it'll be a pleasure to work with any of you guys, because you'll be the people who truly seek to understand. And that's really biblical, right? We're supposed to be slow to speak, right? But we're supposed to be quick in understanding people and thinking about other people. So let me show you guys what you're going to be working on this week. So everybody's going to get this um, doc. You can open it in Google Docs. And it has some tips, predicting tricks. Um, think about, let me make it a little bit bigger because I know this is hard to see. I'll zoom in. Um, so it gives a few predicting tricks. Think about what you know about the person. Think about how the action might affect the person. Think about how the person might react. And think about how you would react in the same situation. So I would like you to share a time when you predicted how someone else was feeling, was your prediction accurate or correct? So tell us a time. It could be at school, at home. What happened? And how did you stop? And what? how did you think the person was feeling? And then were you right about it? Um, so tell us about that. And then in this chart below, you're going to have a little bit of fun doing an interview. So I would like you to choose an adult who takes care of you at home. Maybe it's a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, and you're gonna work with them and you're going to answer these questions. So where it says student's perspective, you're gonna rate how, what do you think about this? And when it's where it says adult's perspective, you're gonna write what they say about it. So you do have to ask them. So here's the questions. What household chores should the student do every week? So maybe the student thinks, I don't have to do anything because I just need to do my homework and study. Hmm. And then maybe the adult thinks, well, 
I think they could help with washing the dishes and they could help with sweeping the floor and they might have some ideas. So talk it over with them. Here's your next question. On school days, bedtime should be, and maybe the student is thinking, anytime I want. And maybe the adult thinks, 8.30, you need to be in bed sleeping, right? And again, this will be a good conversation. You can talk it over with them, understand why they think the way they think. Here's a great one. What should the consequence be for receiving poor grades? Hmm. Maybe the student thinks, oh, they should just have grace and, and they should just let me, you know, um, um, have another chance. And maybe the adult thinks, hmm, I think we're going to take away all your tech time this week and you're going to do extra studying. I don't know. You need to ask them and see how they feel about it. And here's the last question. How much tech time can the student have on school days and on weekends? So that would be like TV, video games, things like that. And so this will be a great conversation. So all of these questions would be amazing um, conversation starters for between you and your adult. And you could share. So remember, be patient with them. Don't just say, oh, I just disagree with you. I think that my thing is right. Remember, listen to how they feel about it. Ask them questions. So why do you think that, right? And then try to really understand their perspective, okay? So you can type in the answers to these questions. So this is also practicing your computing skills, right? Because you're going to need to type in Google Docs or Microsoft Word. I prefer Google Docs because then you can just share it with me. Okay, so I should be getting a typed up copy of this assignment from you. And um, it should be in a legible font. So I would maybe just keep it right now. It's a time, it's a Calibri. You could, if you wanna make it a little bit bigger, you can. Um, and remember, type the correct spelling, spell check it, make sure the grammar is correct. It's a good exercise for you to practice typing and to practice checking your work inside of these typing programs, okay? So that will be your assignment this week. And don't forget about your typing too. Um, catch up if you're behind. And then I will see you guys next week. All right, bye guys.